to my video. Um, if you are a regular subscriber to this channel, then you know I have been doing a brand new series on this channel called Getting to Know Us, and I've been just sharing a bunch of stories about things that have happened to us in the past before we started vlogging. And today, I'm gonna do the video of Sophia's story. If you haven't watched, I'm gonna give you a little bit of history. If you haven't watched Gabby's story, which comes before Sophia's story, then you might wanna go back and watch that. I'll put a link in the description for Gabby's story. So I'm gonna start out at the end of Gabby's story. So if you haven't watched that, you might wanna go back and watch that. So um, Sophia is my youngest child, my youngest daughter, and she is my fifth child. I had, um, my fourth child, also a little girl, was a pregnancy after a tubal reversal, and Sophia is the, is the story of my journey with infertility. My fourth baby when I was 37 years old, and the doctors had already told me that, had already considered me advanced maternal age, and said, if you wanna have another baby, then you need to do it as soon as possible, because uh, time is ticking and you need to just get it done before it becomes a, you know, a big issue. So I breastfed Gabby for nine months and I said to my husband, okay, you know, we can't go any longer. We need to start trying now. So I stopped breastfeeding my daughter and um, we started trying. And when I started trying to for my fourth baby after my tubal reversal, um, we expected to really have to struggle. The doctors warned us and said, you know, this could take some time, even though getting pregnant had never taken time for me. And so so we were really surprised when I got pregnant the second cycle after after surgery after major surgery and so this time when they said to me you know even though you just had a baby nine months ago this could take some time because you're 38 years old and I was like whatever it's obviously not gonna take that much time because I already just had a baby little did I know so we tried the first cycle, nothing happened. We tried one more cycle and I thought for sure I was gonna be pregnant and nope, nothing happened again. After the second cycle, I thought, hmm, all right, I need to really know what I'm doing. That's the cycle that I started getting really hardcore into trying to get pregnant. I started um, charting my fertility. I started taking my temperature every day. I started calling Sam at work saying, Sam, it's time, you have gotta come home. And he was really good about it, surprisingly. He was really, you know, just did whatever I told him to do, and he was really excited, and he really wanted to have another baby. I joined a bunch of support groups and found some amazing ladies that I am still friends with um, to this day while I was trying to get pregnant. When you're trying to get pregnant, it is such a lonely journey. People don't want to talk about it. People don't want to hear about it and it's all consuming. It totally consumes every single part of your mind, what you're thinking at any given time. Month after month, it just kept flying by and still I just was not pregnant. It was so surprising to me. I don't even understand. I went to the doctor a couple of times and one thing I learned is that when you're older, doctors are like, yeah, well, you're old, so we can't help you. And there are lots of things I could have tried, lots of things that I could have done, but there's not very much support. If you are young and healthy, doctors are like, yes, let's do this, we can do it. But when you're older, they're like, you're already old. Through the whole course of our infertility, I knew I was gonna have another baby. I knew it. I dreamed of this little girl that looked just like Gabby but had different kind of eyes, a baby with dark black hair that I knew. I, I knew I was gonna have a baby and I knew it was gonna be a girl and other people would say, oh, you can't know that. I knew, like I knew it in my heart. At Christmas time, we had been trying for about 10 months and um, yeah, 10 months, you guys. And that might seem like not a very short time for a lot of people, but for me, who got pregnant without even trying to get pregnant so many other times, that was such a long time for me. Um, at Christmas time, I uh, bought a little decoration for our Christmas tree. Um, for Gabby, it said, it had her name on it, and I bought it for the Christmas tree, and when I bought it, I bought another one, and it said Sophia on it. And I showed it to Sam, and I said, look, and I bought these Christmas decorations, and he said, Sophia, what? we don't even have a Sophia. And I said, but we are gonna have a Sophia. We had already decided on our names for a boy and on our names for a girl, and I knew we were gonna have a Sophia. And I kept, I kept my faith and I tried to stay positive and it was the hardest thing. Probably infertility was one of the hardest things that we have ever gone through. 
I think that having infertility and not knowing that it was going to turn out okay would be way more harder than having infertility and knowing without a doubt that I was going to have a baby. After I bought the Christmas decoration, I hung it on the tree and we had a really nice Christmas and I got a puppy for Christmas that year. That's the year that we got Macy. We got Macy that year and she was a, a little tiny one pound chihuahua and she was the cutest little thing and I just loved her. In January, so that was in December and in January I got pregnant and it was just so crazy. I had, uh, at that point I just was so lost and so overwhelmed, I stopped charting my fertility. I stopped her keeping track. I just said like, it, if it's going to happen, it's just going to happen. I can't, you know, it was the, the tracking of the, of my fertility was so much more stressful and so much more work for me. So when I gave it all up, I just felt so much more comfortable. So we got a, I got a puppy for Christmas and the next month, a couple of weeks later, I got pregnant. I did not even know I was pregnant. It was early February and Sam and I, packed up our family and we went to Toronto because Sam's sister, younger sister was getting married and we went to her wedding and Sophia or Gabby was in her wedding. She was only two and a, she was only, how old was she? She was almost two years old at that point and she was in the wedding. So we went to the wedding and we came home from the wedding and I didn't notice anything different at all. We came home from the wedding and a couple days after we had been home, I thought, I'll just take a pregnancy test because you never know, I could be pregnant. And of course I took it and it was positive and I was freaking out. I phoned Sam and I said, oh my gosh, I I'm, I took it. I was like freaking out. It probably couldn't even understand what I was saying. But yeah, it turned out that I had already been, I was already five weeks pregnant by the time I found out. Because I had a previous uh, tubal surgery, it meant that I ha was high risk for a tubal pregnancy. So because anybody who has surgery on their tubes is required to go into a bunch of prenatal testing really early on. So it was really imperative that I find out as soon as possible so that I could book a bunch of tests to make sure that the baby wasn't in my tubes because that can be a life threatening situation. So I had decided, Sam and I had decided that this time I was not gonna go to the doctor, I was gonna go to a midwife. And I thought that a midwife would just be more relaxed and not be throwing around terms like, like advanced maternal age and hypertension and high risk. And I just wanted a relaxed, easygoing pregnancy. And that's exactly what I had going to the midwife. They didn't say anything about my age. In fact, what they said to me was, we have older patients than you. And so I had a really relaxed pregnancy. I did not have a single solitary um, complication at all. So at 41 weeks, I was induced because none of my babies ever want to come out. So I'm always induced at 41 weeks and she was my biggest baby by far. She was nine pounds, three ounces. She had a ton of black hair and big fat chubby cheeks, just like in all of the dreams that I had of her. It just was amazing and it was just exactly what I knew it would be and all that waiting and all that struggle and I did not even hardly touch on all the struggle. It was really stressful. It is really hard to try to have something that you want really badly and, and not know how to fix it and not know how to get what you want and not have any support. The support for people suffering from infertility, people feel bad and you can talk to people about it, but you can't talk about it for month after month after month because people get tired of it. And you don't want infertility to define who you are. You don't want people to say, oh my gosh, here comes Laura. All she's gonna do is talk about how she can't have a baby. So it become, people just internalize it and it becomes a really private battle. A lot of people didn't even know it was an issue with us, I don't think, because we just kept it private. And it was all worth it when we when when she was born it was amazing it was perfect she was perfect after sophia was born it became apparent very quickly that she had a colic and um little did we know what things were going to transpire in our life with her while well, she was a little girl she had so much trouble when she was a baby. She became very, very sick. And I'm gonna end the video at that because I wanna share with you the story of how we almost lost Sophia. Oh, just saying it even makes me tear up. 
Um, it's probably going to be an emotional video and I'm gonna try and shoot that sometime this week so watch for that if you're interested in seeing um, what happened to Sophia after she was born and how we almost lost her but anyway um, I am gonna end Sophia's story there and thank you so much you guys for watching our video and thank you so much for all of you guys who are subscribed to our channel for all your love and all your support and I hope you like this series that I'm doing I just thought of it out of the top of my head and because so many things happened to us in our lives before we started vlogging and I lost those memories um, it's hard to remember all the things that that you know that you've gone through and so having these video memories are going to be amazing and amazing for my kids and one day if my girls have infertility or have trouble getting pregnant then maybe they'll be able to watch these videos back and say you know this is what happened to my mom and and I just need to persevere and have faith and be strong and I'm not saying that that works for every single person I know that infertility is a very unique um, road and it, everybody is different so I understand that but um, if this video can help anybody then it is worth it see you later thanks for watching and don't forget to make sure to hit that subscribe button down below